Guys, how you doing? My name's Tommy, and this is the Gallery Backyard Barbecue, and this is round four of the Barbecue Pitmasters of YouTube Challenge. Look, and before we get going on today's show, I got to give a uh, little shout out and good wishes to whom I'm competing against, and that is CJ at Cooking with CJ and CJ's Q. I'll leave information to his channel down below, and you're definitely going to want to check out his uh, brisket cook, as I'm sure it's going to be top notch. The proteins that we got to cook are going to be a brisket, so CJ's doing one, I'm doing one, Grill Sergeant is doing one, and also Joe at Joe's Smoking Pit Barbecue. All those channels will be listed down below. You need to check out all four of the cooks, check out all four of the briskets, and then vote on which one you think's the best. So guys, look, the uh, plan is I got a 14 oh, pound yeah. brisket in the uh, house. This is a uh, 14 pound prime brisket that I got local. I'm gonna get it on the board here. I'm gonna give it a nice little trim. I'm gonna hit it with kosher salt and pepper. That is it, as I want the uh, brisket to be the uh, star of the show, right? I got the pit. I'm gonna set it at 225 Fahrenheit with post oak mixed in with the uh, fuel. I wanna get a lot of smoke on this. I wanna bring it up slow. I want it to render down. And however long it takes is as long as it takes. Guys, this is gonna be fun, man. This is gonna be an overnighter in the shack. Oh yeah. All right, everybody, look, this aims to be a, a pretty good brisket cook. I do promise you, but look, hit that subscribe button. And ring that bell so you get notified on every time the channel does a upload. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. All right, guys, look, I am going to go over just the uh, basic trimming of a, uh, a brisket. And keep in mind that we are backyard pit masters. So do what you feel comfortable. You want to uh, trim what doesn't look right to you, right? So one thing I do is when I remove the brisket, I leave that pocket so the juices or what have you will stay in the wrapper and goes uh, in the uh, garbage, right? And the first thing you want to do is look the uh, brisket over, right? Every brisket is different, and you could see this brisket really was... Uh, had a number done on it, man. That fat cap is all kinds of messed up, but hey, man, it is what it is. And basically what I'm gonna do is just get some of that discoloration off. I like to leave a, uh, I like to leave a good quarter of an inch. So hey, man, what I got to work with is what I'll leave on there. And anytime I get a brisket, what you want to do is what I do is square it off, right? I square it off. I get rid of some of that brown meat that's always on the uh, sides, that discoloration. I'll square that off and get rid of that. Then what I'll do is I'll jack the uh, meat up with my hand like that because you want to get that silver skin off. So really when you're cleaning a, a brisket, the, uh, the goal really is to get it aerodynamic. So you don't want to create any pockets in the, uh, in the brisket, any valleys sort of say. And you definitely want to trim off anything that's discolored and which is usually on the sides. basically just kind of clean up the uh, point. Any hard fat like that is not going to render down, so you just want to get rid of that. And 
again you just want to work that silver skin off that is that shiny thin skin get rid of that look i am going to do salt and pepper is uh in my book what belongs on the brisket it's one of the only meats where i don't like to put a, a fancy rub i'm going to go 50 50. i lean heavily on the uh, pepper when i'm doing a brisket so 50 50. if you're not that into pepper you can go 70 30. 70 kosher salt 30 pepper so basically you're looking uh you're working with a uh a pretty big piece of meat here so you want to make sure you get enough rub on the meat you want to get all sides tops bottoms hold the meat up so you get a uh get a good angle and uh just get it on I usually apply the uh, rub about an hour, hour and a half before I get it on the pit. It's a little bit of a debate. Some people like to put it on cold. I like to bring it up a little bit to room temperature. So uh, that's the way I do it. Also remember, don't rub the uh, rub in, just kind of pat it in. So look, we are cruising along. It is 8.30 p.m. And again, I am doing post oak mixed in with the uh, fuel. And I got the uh, pit running at 225 Fahrenheit. And we are basically looking at an all-nighter. see the moisture just in that hour and a half gets drawn right out of the meat. And I'm putting the uh, point over the hot spot, right? I know that's the hot spot on my pit. So look of note here, we are at 157 Fahrenheit, probably in the stall, but we're gonna let it go for another hour or two. We got some rain barreling down, and we had a little dip at about that 12.30 mark or so, but we are holding pretty good at 2.34. So basically, I'm just gonna check color, make sure everything is looking good, no burn marks and hit it with a little spritz and i am going with a, a basic water spritz that's a big deal man this brisket is looking good she's been on for nine hours a little bit longer than usual right we're in the stall we've been in the stall but i'm only cooking at that 225 fahrenheit so i just let her run the color on this thing is is, is beautiful man she is looking good i'm going to get her on the board here i'm going to get her wrapped up i'll get a probe in her and i'm just going to let this run right through the stall and right into that 200 or toothpick tender, man, this is gonna be good. So look, basically we are still only at that 163 Fahrenheit. So we are definitely in the, uh, in the stall as mentioned. I will get it out. I will get it on the board. I will get it a little spritz and get it wrapped up.
and obviously you want to get a probe back in her. So look, if you took the uh, probe out at 163 or so, when you get it back in, you do want to be around that range of 163 so you know you've hit the uh, right spot. Now look, I'm just going to touch on this real quick. This is some uh, sides, some cornbread, and some slaw. But hey, man, don't bow out yet because I got a little trick to slaw. To this stuff. Yeah. you're going to go 375 for 30 minutes and hey man voila and there she is that's magic, magic. did he say voila so look basically on my slaw and this is a uh, something you need to try sugar acv mayo and yes red onion Comment down below if you ever heard of red onion in a slaw, and also comment down below if you'll try red onion in a slaw. Oh, yeah, that's good stuff. Oh man, that is good stuff right there. All right, guys, look, we are coming up on that 13 hour mark. We're showing 200 on the uh, probe. What I want to do is pop the uh, pop the hood and just take a couple handheld readings. I'm thinking maybe a few more minutes, but let's check it out. Basically, what we're looking for is uh, obviously temp, right? 200 or so, but you got a probe like butter. If you're getting a little resistance, then you know you got a couple more minutes. Alright guys, look, so the uh, point is probing like butter. The uh, flat needs a, a few more minutes. It's still reading under that 200 mark, again, where the point is at that 200 mark, right? So maybe about 15, 20 minutes, we'll check it again. Alright guys, look, that is it. 14 hours and 20 minutes. We are probing good. We are reading about 204, 205 in the point and the uh, flat is a little bit tender. The flat actually trailed behind the point a little bit, so I let it go an extra 20 minutes. I'm gonna open it up, I'm gonna get it in the cooler, and we'll let it sit for two hours. Oh yeah. Oh. And of course you bend it like that, you get a uh, good jiggle out of it. You know she's, uh, she's about ready. Again, man, it is in the cooler. And I'll see you in two hours. 17 hours total. I think maybe 18 with the prep. But either way, we're going to get it on the board and take a look. So look, right off the bat, you can see she's got, a, uh, she's got an easy bend. You like that? we're going to get a lot of moisture. Oh, yeah. Oh. Man, nice bark. I mean, right away you get that pepper. I put a lot of pepper on this. I like that.
That's the money right there, man. That's lunch right there, as I can tell you. You know, trying to get the uh, camera angle and trying to cut, it's real. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know. I mean, she's a little tender there in the uh, point. I'd let it go a little further, but I'll tell you, man. <laughs> I mean, this point is friggin' money, man. This is good. The perfect around of, you know, it's got the perfect moisture, fat, nice and pull apart. Mm. Alrighty, so look, man, this may be one of the uh, better briskets that I've cooked, at least in a long time, man. It has the right amount of smoke. Uh, it, it's got the right amount of salt and pepper. I mean, it is uh, juicy as juicy can be. I mean, guys, look, man, this was a, uh, this was a long day. And I shall be well rewarded and also Molly will be well rewarded. <laughs> Guys, look, man, I'm going to wrap this up. It's been a long day. Don't forget to check our sponsors down below. I'm going to roll them on the screen also. I'm also going to roll my YouTube and Patreon members on the screen. I appreciate all them. I appreciate all you. Again, CJ's info down below. Make sure you check out his brisket, as I'm sure it's going to be killer. Also, uh, my buddy Andrew Grill Sergeant. And Joe from Joe's Smoking Pit Barbecue. Check them all out and vote which one you think is the best. Look, that is it, man. We are going to wrap this up. And until next time, we will see you. Soon.